instructor Birfit. Hello, everybody, and welcome again for um, a class with Jelly Arts. My name is Birgit Koopsen. I'm a Jelly Arts ambassador, and I'm in the Netherlands. And uh, I just want to tell you that I have a little cold, so I might need to mute myself uh, during the class for maybe for a moment if I have to sneeze or cough or something like that. So you know where I'm gone when I uh, mute myself. But... Um, you came here today to make a snowy holiday cards and um, that's what we're going to do so let's turn the camera to my hands and um, start working so i have a couple of um, samples here um, and what i really like about um, when i create cards like this is that i can use my uh, stash of gel prints so the prints that i already have and especially the ones that um didn't turn out so well are actually really good to create cards like this because the fun part fun thing is that if you take uh, little pieces of a print that is not your favorite then uh, suddenly that little piece turns out to look very different than when you see it as like one um one big print so if you have a lot of prints that you're not really fond of then this might be a really good way to use those uh, those prints but uh, today of course I will also create a couple of prints especially to make these cards because um, it's a gel printing class and I'm not only going to show you how to create the cards but also how uh, to create some prints um the prints that I used for these cards were prints that I made with um, thread and yarn. And actually, I've done a class especially on thread and yarn a couple of uh, months ago for uh, Jelly Arts. And that is also available on the Michaels website and on the uh, Jelly Arts YouTube channel. But uh, I'm also going to use a thread and yarn today to create a couple of backgrounds and then show you how to use those backgrounds to create these cards. But if you want to play along and um, don't want to uh, make new prints, especially to create these cards, then you can just uh, grab some prints from your stash and um, get some really quick um, gel printed cards. Because if you already have the background prints ready, then of course it is uh, so much less work to make these so what you need uh, or at least what I am going to use today is uh, some Duralar mat and this is a polyester film that you can use for all kinds of mixed media uh, purposes but what I really like to use it for is to create masks and stencils because um, the product is uh, transparent so what you can do is um, print out some shapes that you found online, for instance, and uh, trace them on the Duralar and then cut them out. But you can also just die cut some shapes. That's what I actually did. I have some die cuts here, some stars and some circles. But for instance, if you would like to make some uh, Christmas bells, for instance, or uh, what's it called? The... Um, um, the little leaves, the uh, mistletoe, something like that, then you can um, find something online, uh, shapes, and print them, and then um, trace them on the Duralar and cut them out, and you can use them as uh, masks. And what uh, really is really nice about the Duralar is that it is um, it's kind of a plastic that does not tear, it does not buckle when it gets wet or when it gets uh, warm, for instance, if you use your heat gun or something like that. But if you don't have the Duralar, you can also use just some acetate sheets, something like this. Um, even sometimes you have like a flat uh, surface on uh, like a cookie tray or something like that from a uh, sturdier plastic that you can cut shapes from. Or you could even just do it with paper. Um, the thing with paper is that if you use a lot of paint and the paper gets really wet, it might tear. 
when you lift it up from your from your print and then uh, you can't use them again so you ha will have to make new ones but if you do it carefully and build up a layer of paint on the paper they can actually also get really sturdy because um, the acrylic paint is also kind of a plastic when it uh, when it dries so if you have paper with several layers of acrylic paint then uh, they will eventually also get very sturdy like um, the acetate or the duralar shapes so that's first to create the the shapes you need to uh, create these cards then i have some um recollections card which is also available at michael's and um I've cut it to size to fit on the recollection uh, cards. So this is a set of 50 cards and 15 envelopes. And uh, you can, they already have this like, um, I actually really don't know what it's called in English, but that you can already like fold it. As you can see, it's it already has this, <laughs> line <laughs> kind of like an embossed line or something that makes it really easy to fold them and i've cut my paper a little bit smaller than the card because i want that white uh, frame around my card like i have here so if you have if you're using paper that you already have prints on then you can also just decide to cut it to size later uh, when you're done printing but um, as I don't have that much room here to show you I prefer to print on um, paper that already has the right size so I can assemble the cards easier at the end and then I also have some uh, pens or markers here so I have a Posca white Posca marker to create the snow um, not only the snow that's on the uh, on the bulbs and on the stars, but also the splattering is done with the Posca marker, which I will show you at the end. And then I have a gold a golden pen to create um, the um, the string where they uh, hang on. So, but I'm also going to show you that uh, at the end. Then I have um a repositionable adhesive and this one is from a scrapbook adhesives and it's a uh, repositionable dots and i use this to apply the mask to my background when i print the second layer so um to make sure that they don't move and i get them in exactly the right position where i want them um Usually I need two or three layers before I have the dark blue, almost black uh, background uh, opaque enough to my liking. So if I use repositionable adhesive, I can just put them back on my card every time I do a new print and have it in the exact same position every time. And I also have from a uh, scrapbook adhesives, the red uh, stick, my stick with the, um, with the lines. And this is a permanent one. And I use this one to apply the print to my card. And then of course, I'm going to use acrylic paint to make the prints. And um, I have here my favorite brands, which are, um, Winsor & Newton and Amsterdam, Talent Amsterdam and Liquitex. Basics are the uh, paint brands that I use the most for these kinds of gel printing. Uh, I also have some, um, I do have some golden uh, paints, but they are really expensive and absolutely not needed for um, this kind of, of gel printing. But of course, if you have them, you can use them. And if you have uh, other brands um, 
more craft paints, they will also work. Uh, any acrylic paint actually will work for these techniques. So um, let us start with creating some backgrounds. So as I want my cards to get that wintry feel, um, I'm making the background quite dark. So I've used a darker blue and mixed it with a darker green even and some black. Um, I like to use a variety of colors to create the background because otherwise you get like a really flat, a really flat color if you would use just one dark blue or black or something. So I like to mix a couple of colors and maybe in the first glance, you would not say that it is different, um, more than one color. But if you look closely, you will see that it would really make a difference when uh, using only only one color. But because I want to use those, the um, that dark color, that deep blue, almost black, because... Um, I really want that high contrast with the snowflakes and the snow that's on top of the shapes. Um, so I need more lighter colors to be in my uh, original in the first print. Because if I would use darker colors in my first print and then um, print on top with the darker blue and uh, and black, you would not get this nice contrast and they would not like really pop um, in the dark background. So I'm going to try and make some um, prints in lighter colors. And I really like how this turned out with the, with the thread and the yarn. So I'm kind of trying to replicate that background. And to know um, the order of the colors, you really need to uh, experiment a little bit with gel printing to get the, um, uh, the understanding of um, how the layers are built up to, um, to get these color combinations. So here I have... Um, the color of the yarn that you see in my print is uh, blues and purples. That means that in the very first layer, I actually used the darker colors, the blues and the purples, but only a little bit of it stayed behind on the plate. And then I used the lighter colors, the yellows and the pinks and the oranges to pick up those colors, which gave the overall print um, a light and bright uh, overall feel. So what I'm going to do is I actually have to make uh, three prints, three layers to get to this card. And I'm just going to show you how I did it so it will all make sense. So I'm going to start with um, a violet. And I'm also going to use a turquoise. And I think I'm even going to add in a little bit of purple. Because I want my the prints of my string and yarn to be in those in those colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll out my paint and mix the colors, blend the colors, but not too much. I really want to keep seeing um, all the different colors. If I go over it too much, if I keep rolling out the paint, then I will just end up with one new color, and that's not what I want. So don't overbrayer. I always say don't overbrayer but also make sure that you don't have too much paint on your plate because it's really hard to pick up too much paint and um, you don't get nice and crisp prints if uh, too much paint stays behind. So now I'm just going to put this string 
on the plate. And also I have some yarn here, which has a variety of thickness, which will make, which will give it a very organic, organic look. And I'm not going to be too concerned about where which uh, yarn or string is going to be because I, I can't plan everything. I can't possibly plan already where exactly my open spaces are going to be. So I'm just going to make random prints and then just see where I end up. And I'm just going to use some scrap paper, some cleanup paper to um, remove all the excess paint from the plate and the excess paint in this case is actually the paint uh, all of the paint that's in the open area so which is not covered by the thread or the yarn and my cleanup paper i just grabbed the first one that was under my roll of paper and it happened to have a yellow paint already on there so probably this might actually also um, be a really nice print so here we go and I'm lifting up all of the thread and the yarn from the plate so this is just my cleanup paper but definitely worth holding on to because um, for something like in an art journal or card or whatever, I can also use this one. So I'm definitely going to hold on to that one. And here, what's left on the plate, what you see here is the paint that was underneath the string and the yarn and was not picked up by the paper so the yarn and the thread basically uh, became like a mask and prevented the paint from being picked up with my from with my uh, cleanup paper now before i can uh, pick up this paint it needs to be dry because if i add paint to this plate right away and i brayer the new paint um and spread it on my plate while this paint is still wet i will just mix everything and i will totally lose the um, um, the texture that is now on the plate so i have to make sure before i add the new color that this is dry um so when i am gel printing just for for myself just for fun i usually have two and sometimes even three or four plates out at the same time and work on all of them because then one can dry be, uh, while i'm working on the other one or sometimes i even use one of the plates to clean off my brayer so instead of um, cleaning my brayer on uh, scrap paper I'm doing that on an extra gel plate and then uh, also um, push my stamp in there or uh, my clean off my uh, stencil or my mask on there and then um, also kind of um, create something on that plate too with all of the leftover paint basically. And that usually also turns into something that can be used very well as a background for cards like this, for instance. And um, of course, I'm doing this now for uh, holiday cards with snow, but you can probably imagine that you can do this for any kinds of cards. You could do this with, instead of circles and stars, you could make hearts and make cards for Valentine's or whatever comes to your mind. You can do this with any shape, right? So this looks dry. Excuse me. This looks dry, which means that I can now apply my pickup layer. Um, if I really would have wanted, I could have printed it this 
uh, on an already um, colored background, like um, like my cleanup paper, for instance. If I would have had a smaller piece of yellow with a yellow background, I could have like printed it instantly, and then um, I wouldn't have to do this second layer. But usually, when you make uh, create a texture like this with thread or yarn. Um, Parts of it dry so fast that um, not everything will be picked up from the plate. So I prefer to leave this to dry, then add the new color for the pickup layer, put my paper on top and then lift everything in one go and have my, um, my background print ready. So I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow um and a even brighter yellow and i definitely also want some of this very bright neon pink reflex rose it's called one of my favorites um how about even adding a tiny little bit of orange just lay, make it a nice and bright mix. So I really, if you are here for the first time and you don't know me or my work, um, I really like bright and bold colors. Um, so that's obviously also the way I create my um, my cards and and the colors that I use in my techniques. But if you are not into the bright colors and maybe especially not for the um, for the holidays if you like more traditional colors then of course you can totally do this with more traditional colors that's all up to you just as long as you keep in mind that you are going to add that um darker layer that's going to be your background in the end and that you want a nice contrast, a nice contrast for your, um, for your dark background. But um, yeah, you could just use a red and white or red and maybe a lime green or something and then, um, add the really dark background and get your shapes in more tradi more traditional uh, Christmas colors if you want to. Or you could even make them monochromatic and um, use different shades of blues, lighter blues. They will also stand out in the dark blue background whatever whatever you like and of course you could also experiment and say okay so i want my uh, my shapes to have um darker colors and i want to make a more like a snowy background and i'm going to do the final layer that's going to be my background with white or uh, a very light blue for instance and turn it around you get a totally different effect but then it would be really nice if you use darker colors in your in your first print the only thing that you really have to um, think about is that in your background you don't really want to see uh, anything still from the original print. You don't want the the texture of um, you don't want the texture to to appear in your background, right? So because that would totally ruin this this effect. So you need to make sure that the the paint that you're using to create the background is an opaque paint, or you have to make sure that you print enough layers on top of each other um, 
to make sure that you don't see that background anymore. So for those of you who are new to gel printing or maybe even to using acrylic paint, I'm real quick going to show you how, to, how you know if your colors are opaque. And um, because I'm going to leave my paper on the plate until the paint is dry, because if you do that, if you leave the paper on the plate until all of the paint is dry, you are um, the most sure that you will pick up everything from the plate. I could have picked up my paper right away. And if I used exactly the right amount of paint, which is like a really thin layer, then um, I would be able to pick up the paint, um, all of the paint from the plate right away. But then it's very important that you have the exact right amount of paint. But if you're not too sure if your amount of paint is right, then just leave everything to dry. Because if everything is dry, you will always pick up all of the paint, no matter how thick your pickup layer is. But make sure that it is really dry, because if your paint is half dry and half still wet, then um, your paper will tear when you pick it up because um, it needs you need more um, pressure is probably not the right word because it's the other way around. But you need more to you need to pull harder to pick up paper uh, with dry paint than when you have wet paint. So if some of the paper is still wet, you will tear your paper. So either pick it up right away or you wait until all of the paint is dry. I hope that that makes sense. So I have here, uh, oh, these happen to be all uh, Amsterdam paints, but I will show you that uh, this it's the same with the golden and the Winsor and Newton and also with the Liquitex. Let me see where, the, here's the Liquitex. So if you have a little bit more professional paint, even if it's just student grade, like uh, the ones I have here, they usually have a little, a little square um, that indicates how opaque your paint is. And um, if you have a little square like this one, an open square, then that means that your paint is um, very uh, translucent. And if you have a little square that has is half full, then it's semi-translucent. And if you have a little square that's completely filled, like a little black square, and also here on the golden paint, and the little square is also here on um, the Winsor & Newton, and here on the Liquitex. So when it's a full square, then it's an opaque paint. That's how you know. Okay, so then you can decide um, which paint to use in which layer. So let me pick up this piece of paper and see how my background paper turns out. Now, here we go. This is quite pretty, I think. This will make some really nice shapes that will definitely stand out with the darker with the darker background. So if you don't have any uh, prints lying around, then you can make prints especially to create these cards if you want to. But if you are already a gel printer, then you probably have a whole stash of prints lying around and you can just go through your stash and look at the colors and look if they would fit with a darker background and then choose your papers um, to use to create cards. And especially, as I said, the ones that didn't turn out to be the prettiest prints like these, they will probably be perfect to use as backgrounds for these kinds of cards. So once you have your backgrounds, you can go to the next step. And um, as I said, I like to mix my black and my darker 
blue, but also sometimes add in a little bit of, uh, of green to get a more natural color and not, not like a, a flat single colored layer. So let me check, is there, are there any questions? I don't think there are. So if there are no questions, then I will just continue. Um, yes. I'll just make sure I have some cleanup paper. And um, so I have here my favorite, my two favorite blue colors. The one is, this one is from Winston Newton, the Prussian blue. And um, from Amsterdam is the greenish blue. They are very similar, although this one is even a little bit brighter than this one in real. Um, these two are both not opaque colors. At least this one is a translucent color, the Amsterdam one, and the Galleria, the Winsor & Newton, is a semi-translucent color. Now, what I can do is um, print several layers with the more translucent colors, but I would need a couple of layers. So what I prefer to do sometimes is uh, print a layer first with a, a titanium white, which is an opaque color, to um, tone down the, the texture in the background already. So when I then um, add the layer with the blues, it's already not uh, too textured anymore and you're less likely to see the texture shine through. So I'm going to do, uh, just to show you how I do it, I'm going to do a layer with the titanium white first, and then I'm going to add the, uh, the colored layer. So if I want to do the circles, I have some, uh, a variety of um, sizes, and I can just, um, decide where I want to have which size. And so you have to imagine when you put the mask on top of your background that um, the area underneath the circle is the area that is that you're going to see when you've done the print. So everything around will be covered. So you still have the possibility to decide which parts of your background you actually want to see in your final print. So you can move your paper around and look at the parts that you like best and then decide where to put your, your circles. Um, I think I'm going to do it something like this. And then I'm going to use my repositionable adhesive and stick my circles to my background so they stay in place. Um, what is important when you uh, use the repositionable adhesive is that your background and the paint on your background is really dry because if you put this on um, on a background where the paint is still a little bit wet, then um, afterwards when you want to remove it, you might uh, wipe away some of the of the paint too, and then you will see little white dots in your in your print, and of, of course you don't want that. So your background paper needs to be really, really dry. And I hope it, I actually took, I am using the one that I just printed. So I hope it's dry enough, but we will see um, once I've done the print. So as I said, first, I'm going to do a white layer because this one is going to cover up most of the texture in the background already. 
and I'm going to roll out a nice layer. And then place my card on top. I like to put a sheet of paper on top so I can rub it really well without getting my hands all dirty. And then when I lift up my paper, the, the mask might actually stick to the plate and not come up right away with my um, with my print, but that's okay because I can just put them back in place. See, that's what I meant. So this one stayed on, but these two came off and I can just put them back on here. And this one too. And make sure you put it the right side because if I would put it down like this, then I would have the white paint on my on my background. So make sure to turn it around. And now I need to clean my plate because my next layer is going to be uh, blue. And if I would not clean my plate, then uh, the white would show up in my next print. And that's obviously not what I want. So I'm going to use a baby wipe to clean my plate. They seem to have dried out already a little bit. So what I can do is just spray a little bit of water. And if you don't want to use baby wipes, uh, of course, you can also just use a wet cloth and even wash it and use, use it several times. Okay. Now, in the ideal world, um, I would leave this to dry very well too before I would add the blue layer because uh, a sheet of paper that has moist paint on it will uh, pick up a new layer of paint, not as well as a really dry background wood. I can actually, I'm just going to really real quickly dry it with my uh, heat gun because dry paint just picks up a new layer of paint much better than uh, than a wet layer, a wet background. And as I said, so the Duralar that I used, uh, it can stand heat. So I can just do this with the mask on there. You could also do this with paper mask, but uh, obviously you cannot do this if you use acetate uh, for your mask because the acetate would, would actually melt. So then you can't do it. But now my background is nice and dry and I can move on to the next step. And I'm going to use my nice blue color. And I'm also going to mix in a little bit of the darker green. And of course the black, which is an opaque color and um, should cover it enough. But as I said, that is not always the case. It also depends a little bit of the colors that you used in your uh, original print, whether or not it's like really, really covering up the background and the amount of the translucent paint that you put on your uh, on your plate in this uh, in this layer sometimes my um, translucent paints just a little bit too much and then it's still not covering up everything and I need that extra layer but that's not the biggest problem right then I just 
add another layer. So and you can probably imagine that if you work on more uh, more than one plate at the same time, that this goes even quicker. But yeah, especially if you have already a bunch of uh, prints that you can use and you don't have to make all those background prints before you can start, then this actually goes really quick because now I'm taking almost an hour to create one card. But uh, of course, that can you can do that much, much quicker. And I am afraid that I used a little bit too much paint here. As you can see, I, I'm not able to pick up all of the paint in the first, with the first sheet of paper which also means that it will probably turn out a little less translucent because some of the paint will stay behind on the plate. Oh, maybe, maybe it is okay. Uh, it's not too bad, I think. So it needs, it does need uh, another layer, as you can see, because the white of my previous layer is still shining through a little bit. So this one is going back there. And I also think I used a little bit too much black because it's, it doesn't really look as if I used a variety of colors. The, and the black is quite, how do you say it, plain? I think we can call it a plain, like a plain color. So in my next layer, I will add more, more blue and green, I think. And this already dried quite a lot. So again, I need some water to clean my plate. And I don't want to uh, keep the paint on the plate. In if I do different kinds of gel printing, I usually do leave the paint on the plate because I think that adds uh, interest and texture to my to my prints. But these have uh, such um, because you really see the shape of the circles. They will probably also turn up as those shapes in my print if I don't put them in exactly the right position, the same position as my previous print. And I don't like that. I want a nice um, smooth background be, uh, without extra circles showing up here. So that's why I clean my plate. And again, I'm going to dry my background. And I have to make sure that I keep my um, heat gun away from my gel plate. If you really, really want to do um, some drying on the gel plate, you can use a hair dryer on cold setting, but you can never use heat on your, on your gel plate because you don't want it to melt, of course. Okay, so let's do one more layer and hopefully that's all we need because I also want to show you how to finish, how to finish the card, of course. And again, I have quite a lot of paint, a little bit too much. And I uh, realize now that um, when I made the samples, I actually used a bigger plate and made two of those prints on one bigger plate.
so now I have to take some of the paint off because too much paint is never good. And you will always see that when you demonstrate something that it doesn't go as well as when you do it on your own. I wonder why that is. But I think it's also kind of fun um, because if I, if you uh, watch my reels on Instagram or something like that, if they always look as if everything goes perfect every time I make a print. And of course, that's not the case. It's not like all of my prints turn out perfectly. And I think it's quite good for you to actually see that. Um, not necessarily all of my prints turn out great either. So don't feel um, disencouraged or sad if you're Prints are not, not always like perfect. Okay, I think this looks much better already. Could have been even better, but I'll have to do with this for now because I'm not going to do another layer because I want to finish. So, and this is the one that stuck to the background all through all prints, right? And that's probably because of the paint not being completely dry. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see, but I can see that there's a tiny little white uh, spot here where the uh, adhesive pulled up some of the, of the prints. But if your paint is like really dry, afterwards you can just wipe away the, um, the leftovers of the, of the adhesive that you can see. And then you should not take away any of the paint. Okay, there we go. So now I need to dry it again because I want to use my uh, Posca markers. And they work also work best on uh, a dry background, much better than on wet paint. And also if you want to keep your, the tip of your Posca markers uh, nice and uh, going, then it's better to uh, work on, um, on a dry background. So I can now, I still have the choice to decide which is going to be my top and which is going to be the bottom. But I'm I'm going to do it like this, I think. And first I'm using my golden pen and hang them, hang those Christmas balls or bulbs or how do you call them actually? So I create a little thingy, which I also have no clue how you call these. I'm actually curious, how would you call this, this thingy where, um, which hangs, makes it possible to hang the, Christmas bulbs. Does anybody know? Okay, I like to go with my golden pen um, in front of, of this one here. But uh, also you, you can also decide to have this one going behind this, the top one, and then only go to here and then from there. Uh, 
this is the start. And now you have to make those um, Christmas balls stand out. And that's when I, where I use my white Posca marker and add the snow. And then I also have the possibility to um, make these two come apart from each other because now it's only still one one open space. But now I'm just going to add some snow here and it makes all the difference. Some here also you can do a little bit on top here and on this side and make it a little bit thicker than the outline of the circle because it's on top of the of the ball and not uh, it's not the outline so it has to be a little bit thicker a little bit outside of the outline of your circles and then also if you do some snow here here my paint was still a little bit wet so if you do a little bit of snow here then also make sure you don't do a line straight down because then that makes your uh, ball look flat so you want to have it in um, go around make it look more um, dimensional. So I usually, uh, when I do it with my Posca markers, I do two layers of white to make it like really nice and opaque. But um, as with paint, you can only do that second layer once your first layer is dry because if you go over it like a second time before um, the paint is dry you will just just move it around the paint that's already there you will just move it around and you will not add um, a second layer on top so you have to be a little bit patient there because the posca markers and you also have these markers from liquitex or from um uh, molotov or there are a couple of other brands that have like acrylic paint markers. They actually have real acrylic paint in them. It's not an ink, it's an acrylic paint. It's the same as uh, the paint you use to print with. It's just um, a little bit more liquid. But they work really well together, the acrylic paints um, in your tubes and the paint in um, in the markers you can also use the markers on your gel plate if you want to you can create uh, marks on your gel plate for instance and then use a layer of acrylic paint to pick up the marks from your from your plate and get a totally different effect and feel and look than if you would use um, them straight onto a background. It looks very different if you use them from, uh, or pick up paint from your plate and when you add it directly to your, to your paper. So you can totally experiment with that and use your paint markers, whatever brand of paint marker on your, on your gel plate and might be surprised by um, by what comes out of it. So if you want to do the splattering and the uh, the snowy get the snowy effect, uh, I also like to use my paint marker to do that. Of course, you can use white paint and a brush, but what happens to me a lot of times when I do that is that I get like a, a, a big splash somewhere where I don't want it. So I prefer to use my Posca markers or whatever paint marker to create those splashes. And uh, let me see if I have some scissors there, something I can 
used to hit with, this will probably work. And I just hit my marker and create this snow effect. And I just wish that my background had been a little bit more opaque. But uh, you get the idea, right? So now I just have to wait for this to dry. And then uh, I would probably go over, go over the white again to make it stand out even more. And then I can just use my uh, adhesive roller to glue it to my card. And then uh, you could put a little, like a, like a little text here or a little sentiment and then uh, write your message inside. And there are even in, the, if you take the sets from recollections, then uh, you have also the envelopes. And uh, of course, you could also print on the envelopes. What you could do is create, um, for instance, a background like this, just with dark blue and, um, and black and leave a little space open, use a mask to leave a little space open and make a, a snowy background. And then nothing else needs to be on the envelope. And you can put the card in there if you want to... Um, actually sent it so this is basically it um maybe we can turn the camera uh, around for one moment yes hello there i am again okay so um i hope you enjoyed this class and um what I wanted to say something and I forgot to say, I forgot what I wanted to say. Okay, so it's December. This is my last uh, Michael's class of the year. I will be back in January and then I will make um, tiny little uh, notebooks. Um, actually, I have them here, I will show you. We will be creating these tiny little notebooks and uh, some of them have um, colored papers inside. Some of them have white papers inside or lined papers. Uh, it's all about uh, organization and notebooks and planning and everything like uh, connected to that in January. So I will be back January 10, I thank you. I wish you a wonderful, um, wonderful holidays and a good start of the new year and uh, i hope to see all of you again in january and um for some more colorful gel printing fun so see you then bye 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 <laughs>